Um, while all of this stuff starts to come up, it'll be just a minute coming through here. Um, uh, three things, three things. One, you're all from different places. Imagine if we all had viruses and we're like spreading them type stuff. You know what I'm talking about. So when you sneeze, your mother, your parents were right. You cover your mouth. And this is what normally happens. Hello. Oh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Brad. <laughs> Do you know public keyboards, public keyboards are 400 times more infectious than public toilet seats? Think about toilet seats. Wipe them off. We put that paper. In. Oh, no, not that one. Ugh. Those of you who have worked fast food, things like that. Oh, uh, just hit it another time. See, it's good. Yeah, I can see the hard time. Just a minute. So uh, those of you who work fast food know there's two ways or anything. You have kids in kindergarten, things along this line. You blow the green boogers into your elbows, please. Ugh. That leaves your extremity free for greeting people. God, I just hate to touch some things here. <laughs> it's like, hey, why don't you open the door? So for the health of everybody in this room, for all of us, think about that down the road. So that's one. Two, if you are not contributing to EFF, you are letting all of us down. Because this is your future. I'm old. I live in nowhere, Montana. I'm semi-retired. I mountain bike every day. I have a great time. The younger people here, EFF is protecting you. And if you're not helping EFF in some way, let that Orwellian thing roll around in your head. I thank you. Yeah, isn't that great? I'm daring. Uh, those of you who uh, saw me in the dunk tank, I'm the one that had the pressed white Microsoft shirt. They stopped throwing at the thing and they were throwing at me. It was. <laughs> I was running out of good things to say. I'm glad people kept dunking me. Uh, three. Uh, three. That was an EFF function, by the way. Three. Okay, I look up to not a whole bunch of people. Johnny Long is one of the nicest people. Why? Because he helps the world. He donates part of his book sales out. Oh, let me get this started, sorry. No. He donates part of his book sales on Amazon, johnny.ihackstuff.com. I do executive scare sessions. I love scaring executives. Being a nurse, we're always on the bottom of stuff. Now I strike fear in hospitals and doctors. I, I love it. Oh, well, you think your site's safe? Well, let's go look at this site. And right there, passwords for God's sake. Quote from his own website. Help Johnny help others. Very few times do the helpers ever get help. Go to his site, click through, the money goes to help people that need it. If you've traveled out of the country, we spoke about this the other day. If you've traveled out of this country and come back in, the shock, the shock, if you have not, save your pennies. Go to some third world place, okay. Those are the three things. I am sorry I'm delayed a few minutes. I'm going to pull up the uh, rest of the presentation. And I have provided wetware for everyone to practice on. So make sure if the person next to you is not coherent or sober or awake that you find someone else to chat with because we're going to be actually giving you things to like take home and do. 30 seconds.
One of the things I am not is an OS bigot. We use every one of them because just like people, everyone has its function for something. Hey, how much money would I make if I specialized in Mac viruses? Me? I do Mac viruses. And I'm on the food list because I'm poor because there aren't any. That's why I do Windows. So, you know, that's one of those things. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here it is. This is me. Let me get my, the front here. Too happy a hands this morning. Do not use these things to trick people. The things I am showing you have a purpose. People will spot them. I have watched the masters like Kevin Mitnick work a room, Frank Catch Me If You Can, Abigail. They both studied this. My peers hate me for teaching this to you. I teach to Beltway people, so you will get the exact stuff the Beltway does. Thank God the FBI is busy in the next lecture. That's planning. Here's what you'll learn. Social engineering is not lying. We're going to learn neurolinguistic programming. Yes, you can program your brain and others. This is nothing new. You will learn basics. You will have practice sessions, concepts of interrogation, and probably one of the most useful things called the cop stop. Usually the federal agents, like they snicker because they've been through this. If you're an officer of some form, you'll have probably been through this. You go to a little hidden place and learn these same things. Here's what you will not learn. OK. Whenever I want to learn something, I go to the definitive source. That's eBay. OK, go to eBay. Search for NLP. How about Tony Robbins? He's an NLP person. <gasps> Buy my book now. You will find you can cure your liver, talk to angels, pick up supermodels. Uh, uh, it is the most amazing thing. Where's my overachievers? Have they looked at the disc, my presentation on the disc yet? We told a couple people. Get it? Oh, yeah, a couple people are smiling. Uh, OK, I pulled a page from seductionnow.com on how to pick up Vegas show people. It talks about neg hit. So next year when you come, next year when you return to this conference, <laughs> You can use these techniques in combination to the ones you'll practice. Those people who were at the uh, Black Hat 40th anniversary toga party with Jenny McCarthy. Yeah, these things work, okay? Uh, what I want you to do now is sort of warm up the wetware. We need to get it turned on and the wetware all firmed up. So what I would like to do, all right, I can see some looks here. People are wetware. You are the wetware we will be working with. What I want you to do is turn to the person next to you. I don't care which side. We're going to switch to the other in a minute. Give them your name. I don't care. Make something up if you want. Just, just say hi. So go ahead and turn around. Talk to somebody next to you. Thank you. Now, turn around and talk to the other side. I mean, I'm not, it's not like church, but it's friendly. Come on, he's okay. Well, we booted up enough, so let's keep going here. This is what you are here to talk about. I took this off my website, but I have linked it back to the FBI website. Okay. So I can't show it? Well, let's just hook to your site. Subtle skills for building rapport using neurolinguistic programming in the interview room. Does that say brainwashing? <laughs> Look at them. Look at them. He's poised like her, positioning. 
She is telling him every... Next will be a Kleenex. He... It's amazing. It's amazing. This is what you're here to learn. But it just doesn't work here. My wife does a similar lecture. She's in marketing business. It's called, How to Brainwash Your Boss or Spouse to Get Him to Do Everything You Want. We've been married 20 years. I call her twice a day. <laughs> I'm not saying it works, OK? Read this. Please, I'm sorry. Preferred representational system matching speed, volume, tone, rate, and of speech overcomes client's reluctance to communicate. I want to hack into TCP IP. I'm going to load up IPX and I'm going to run IPX against it. Why we do this in our communications? What I'm going to do is show you how to match packet size, match rate of speed. That's direct quote from the N from the FBI. Let's talk about NLP. Neurolinguistic programming. These two guys back in the 70s, you know, when you go to these things, they always grind on about theory. It's like, I don't give a shit. They studied successful people. That's what makes us different. They didn't study the ones who were broke into. They studied the ones that weren't broke into. Think about that for a change in the way we look at stuff. They packaged it. They said everybody can learn it. It's taught to the law enforcement field. Medical as a registered nurse. I have a degree in clinical psych. This is how I share these things with you. Hi, my name's Brad. I'm your nurse. Your entire family's just died in a car accident. Have a nice day. We are taught these things to make your life very red pill. Okay. There is a great disagreement. We have a book coming out called Secure Networks, Insecure Staff. <laughs> hey, I just give me the password. Why do I need firewalls and stuff? Uh, and there's a whole Jedi, you make these analogies, seductionscience.com. <clears throat> That's all. And whenever I find somebody with a book, they say, but but my friend gave it to me. I'm like, yeah, all right, you ordered it offline. How to pick up superstars. So it's, it, that's about all the history you'll get. Your keyboard, your mouse, represents what you want to your CPU for its utilization. Your exterior senses, like your sight, your hearing, represent your world to your internal wetware CPU. This is not hard. Client's preferred representational system. Who heard the other NLP lecture? He's really nice. I really like him. He talked about modularization of your personality for extension. Y'all remember them? Him? He was very good. These are the tools you use for realizing your modularization so you can then remodularize it and pull it up and use it as needed. I have a current debate going. Um, Justin Peltier, Tom Peltier, Anton, there's like three or four. Um, Tom O'Leary or uh, John O'Leary, they say, oh, social engineering is easy. Anybody can do it. I say, no, pathological lying is easy, but there are ways to tell. These are techniques you can use to extract the information you need right now, like we saw in the picture. Okay? When you, you need to gather data first. Let's call it reconnaissance. Everybody has these, like, I have a slide with 57 definitions of social engineering. Pick one. You need to match people's speech patterns, their word patterns, all the things that are important. Look, the obvious one was his physical pattern. That was the big one. Oops. I have happy hands. Here is the classic. I hear what you say. I see what you say. 
you know, I can feel what you're saying. You use these and you match their dominant sense. You match their speed. Here's something surprising. Some people talk really fast. Some people don't. I get in a conversation with somebody. I, you know, they said when I got to be an adult, my hyperactivity, it'd all be cured. It's like, hey, I'm not hyperactive anymore. I'm cured. God, I love being an adult. You need to match your speed and their speed and your packet size to their packet size. Does all this make sense? If you're trying to go in, you need to match all of these. Let's take a look at the good uh, visual phrases. I want you to speak to the person next to you or around you using visual phrases. Using visual phrases. Can you all see what I'm talking about? Is this clear? Can you, you know, perceive the direction I want you to go here? Yes. She's good. Do it now. Turn to the person. Use a visual phrase with them, please. Fire up that wetware. This is your turn, not mine. <laughs> oh, this is easy. This is easy. All right, let's shift gears here. For some of you, this really was easy. Some people just, well, hey, you know, uh, this is perfectly clear. Uh, I know where we're going from here. Uh, I can see the outlook from all of this. For other people, they were like, because maybe they're not visual. Maybe they're not keyboard. Maybe they use a lot more mouse. Gosh, the analogies here. I want you to talk to the person next to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you all getting this loud and clear? Do you understand? Can you hear what I'm saying to you about changing your representational sense to the person you're speaking with? I'm talking to him. He's a fast visual. I'm going to talk to him as a fast visual. What is my connection rate going to be if I talk to him as a slow oral? He doesn't hear me. He doesn't hear me. Please, talk to the person next to you using auditory phrases. You can hear what I'm saying to you. Do it now, please. The question was, how do you discern what type of question you're talking to? And the answer is recon. Let's think about this for a minute. You enter a room. You're standing there with Jenny McCarthy. You know, you, you stand there with a gorgeous. You listen first. I ping the network gently. I don't want to set off the IDS. I run a few port scans here. I get a few of my friends to run them. I bounce a relay off. I use and map. I just, well, I use auditor. I'm sorry. So I just gently recon. It's called active listening. You listen to what they say, not what they say. Hey, I was at this party and saw this really great thing, you know. She's a visual. She's a slow visual. <laughs> wow. So, does this make sense? You're all security professionals. This is what you do. It's easy to translate it into wetware. It's the same concepts. You don't use IPX attacks on TCP IP. Make sense? Let's do another X. Ask me another question about this. Ask me another It, You know, it seems like, but it can't be that easy, can it? There's a third type. I know you can feel what I'm saying. 
they are the minority. Here's a shock. Men tend to be visual. <laughs> Take it off! Show the tits! <laughs> oh, I wasn't there. No, no, ma'am. I was home early. So, <laughs> yeah. These are fewer. These are fewer. Okay. These are even fewer. This is physiologically based, not cultural, not linguistical. This is hardwired to your body. I'm sorry if you've got a PCMCIA card in there, you've got to deal with it that way. You can't say, well, I'm going to pretend it's an ISA card today. <laughs> Same thing. The smell of money. These are one of the hardest to do. When I find a fast visual, oh my God, we just blow up. Do not confuse rate of speed with brain. Big, big no-no. When I'm in a meeting, the person who hasn't said anything, I will particularly call on or address. Why? Because they've been thinking before they open their damn mouth. They're like, well, we ought to, we ought to. It's like, think about it before you open your mouth. So do not, I work with a lot of Native Americans. Several of them are very, uh, oh my God, this guy like amazes me with his brain. He has a very slow pattern. I have learned tolerance, thank God, from him. <laughs> Speed kills. It's the hardest. This is a moderate practice level. And you stretch your vowels out. Come down today and buy a new car. It's the way it's done. Turn to the person next to you. I would like to hear slow conversation, please. Wet wear exercise. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Oh, you are so good at slow. <laughs> slow down, slow down, come on. Pretend you're from further south or somewhere, y'all. Most find this easy. Okay, let's speed kills. Talk to the person next to you rapidly, please. I'd like to hear a rapid speech pattern. Come on, let's hear it rapidly. More. How are these? Let's talk about this for just a brief minute. Imagine you had to go into a place, change your representational system from a slow visual to a fast guttural. Oh my, oh, I'm just getting nuts thinking about it. You, you enter a room and the person you want to talk to, you're a, I'm a fast visual, I need to talk to a slow guttural. Well, I can feel the knots in my stomach right now. Okay. Notice how difficult these were. Your homework for this year, I'll, uh, I'll see you here next year. I like this place. When you see me next year, I want you to say, well, on the way home, I ran into two fast visuals or a slow aural or, or I found a rare olfactory. <laughs> They're out there. They're out there. Words. Is it a couch, divan, Davenport, sofa? Is it a settee? Is it a soda? Is it a... Oh, come on. All those comedians make those routines about the word pattern. Word patterns and gestures. Those hat fields. When I talk to him, it's, well, I know. Those hat fields. Words are there represent, I was working in a trauma unit. Guy, uh, ET tube, endotracheal tube. Guy screaming at me, Portex, Portex. It's like, 
what the hell is a Portex? It's a brand name, like Kleenex, like Google, like your words may not be the same representation to them. Yes, word patterns change with educational levels. That's just one of those things. If they're putting out multiple syllabic words, you better be putting out multiple syllabic words. Okay? Can you see how you need to change your packet, modularize your speech, so you can pull it up as you need it? This is not some long-term game or something like that. I need that information. I need it now. Can you get it? You need to modularize. And he can get it. Subtle skills. When people start, subtlety is not there. So it's very obvious when people start. That's why I don't think it's easy. Is everybody, like, is this easy for most people to change their skills? No. This is not for me. That's why I love watching the masters at these things. Let's finish up these patterns here. Words that we know they all make those. The FBI agent leaned over to the woman. Posture. I mean, don't do one of those like little high school things. I mean, one of the ways you know you have achieved sync, synchronicity with the person and you're leading them to get what you need. Physiologically, they dilate in here, they will flush, very similar to a sex flush right across here. About that fast comes and goes. When you see that flush, you know you're in a leading position. Gentlemen, please look only from here up when you talk to women. It's a hint. You may get more success. Okay? Just here up. Well, unless you're paying them. Uh, let's see. <laughs> They'd be insulted. So, uh, Let's see. Other things. Putting it all together. First, be aware. You need to practice these combinations. So be a fast visual for a while. Be a slow oral. Listen to people. Do the reconnaissance. Ping gently here. Throw in a word in the conversation there. Probe a port. It makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense. Your dominant representation, your representative sense, even shows up physiologically in the direction you look when you are lying or telling the truth. Visuals look, uh, uh, orals look towards their ears. Visuals actually look towards their occipital lobe in the back. Gutturals, uh, well, you know which way they look. Physiologically wired. One person says, well, uh, I just stare everybody in the face. I say, well, that's when I know you're lying. You always want to put up this little fake banner. You know, I, if I run an I, a IIS, I put up a banner that says Apache. If I run Apache, I put one up that says IIS. Send those IPX after those TCPs. Saves me coming in at night. Our brain, let me show you this picture. This is a classic. If anybody's taken Psych 100, God, I think I've seen this picture here for the last three years. Recall, as you are looking at someone on the right, this is designed, I am looking at this person. Okay? They are recalling towards that part of the brain. They are physiologically, left brain, right brain, bicameralism, business, okay? Visuals look down. Here's the caveat. Here's why people say that, that stuff don't work. It's backwards in left-handed people. It's backwards. Now in your recon, you need to determine handedness. True or false, HIPAA cares as handedness is a protected information. 
Yes, sir. Two big points. How's that for bizarre? So let's look at how this ties into the cop stop. You are the cop. Woo, 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 woo. They're looking pretty funny up there. You wait in your car and watch. I know none of you have ever done this. <laughs> you cannot have a cantenna in some states. I mean, I'm stuffing that stuff and everything under my seat. So they first watch to see how much you stuff under your seat. Okay, that's latency period. I can deal with that. Now they're going to ask you a couple questions. Well, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Smith. Can you tell me where you live? And of course, ooh, hang on, let me make sure. I'm going to back up and get the uh, picture so you can get the uh, relevance. Well, Mr. Smith, can you tell me where you live? Well, I live in Helena, Montana. And he watches my eyes. Well, Mr. Smith, can you tell me uh, your social security number or something? It's like, ah, uh, no. Well, Mr. Smith, it, you all see this coming, don't you? Well, Mr. Smith, have you been drinking? No. My eyes totally shift the other direction. Watch people's eyes. The windows to the soul. But you got to figure it out if they're left-handed first. Back to recon. Oh, by the way, crazy people use to look down this way. As you can see, internal dialogue, it's called. <laughs> I love psych terms. They're like, they're like, we have, th we have three terms for everything in the computer field, and the health field does too. Is it a myocardial infarction? Am I? Is it a heart attack? Is it, we give them all ocular sinister OS or left eyeball. Don't even get me started on serial port RS two thirty two com port. How many names do we have for all these? Uh, let's see. Cop stop. Three questions. And they wait. Sometimes they may ask four. They'll watch which hand you hand them the driver's license with. Well, uh, here, let me help you, Mr. Smith. O okay. Reach out with your dominant hands. Usually, we do this last recall. But I'm sorry. This is the last one of the last. That's why I like this slot. Your homework is to not get caught by that. Don't stare them in the face, because they know you're lying all the way around. Go ahead and lead them in a different direction. Well, yes, sir, I live in here, and yes, sir, my Social Security, and no, sir, I haven't been drinking. <laughs> Does this make sense to people? Does this make sense? I want to give you things you can use. Well, did you have any trouble with the car while it was gone, dear? No! Oh, those scratches are, how'd those get on there? Well, I, I don't know. Kids do it. Kids do it. Watch children. Adults will give it away, cross-cultural, because inside, we're all the same. We have miles of intestines, the same basic number of hearts and lungs, and we're all the same on the inside. Got a CPU and some type of RAM, and, and got this little power thing with little Molexes on it. <laughs> What's the difference? Here's the review. You already read it. Preferred representational system. Come back next year. Tell me if this was easy, okay? There's references, so you can look them up. Salad, they're in the little fine print of the book, the CD. What's your representational system? 
How do you then modularize that representational system and then quickly change back and forth between other ones? You've got to see this difference. If not, at least feel the difference. I'll take questions. Any questions, please? Yes, sir. Ah, very good. Mixed dominance. Every s report I get back from my scan is 100% accurate. Yeah, some people are just different. That by dominant and stuff. Ambidextrous. Yeah, it changes that. Good point. Good point. But how many in the total population? I'm a Mac virus specialist. <laughs> so, yeah. ask me another question. I love questions. Yes, sir. You in the black shirt. Yeah, microphone. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not used, I'm supposed to instruct you in the proper use of a microphone. You in the black shirt. <laughs> Tell me, sir. <laughs> Scream, I'm a naturalist. Oh, it says now, all right. Cool. Um, do you tend to notice that um, rate of speed tends to um, be correlated with uh, volume? So like somebody who speaks really loud but really slow is extremely rare? Yeah. Uh, is rate of speed correlated with volume? I don't know what you're talking about! I even think it's regionally based. Talk to people in different parts of the country, like at this conference. I, I don't, my dreaded fear is help move the help desk to Tony Sopranoville in New Jersey. I, I was in a conversation it's like, I got about every three words here and stuff. So I, yeah, I think it's pretty regionalized and stuff. And it's, st tell me, start looking around in your hometowns and stuff. Good point. Yes, sir. Are there any correlations between uh, representational systems and astrological signs? Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Let me, let me check my aura here and get back to you. Uh, I don't know, I've never tried it, let me know. I mean, <laughs> hey, this is the FBI started this. Uh, I don't know, maybe the CIA has that data. Yes, sir? What, what kind of posture changes do you use to see if you're actually in sync with someone else? Oh, usually you can change, so they were both leaned forward. I am so sorry. What type of posture changes do you see when you're in sync with someone else? So notice how they were both leaned forward. If I know I'm leaning, I can go ahead and stand up and straighten up and, and move back just a hair, and they follow in a few minutes. So you actually lead them, and by changing their posture, you know you're there. Good question. As a, this is a brief follow-up. Could it be something as overt as uh, you know, taking a drink or like picking up a peanut or something and eating it, something like that? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you all know that sales pitch. You put the pen on the contract, and you let it roll down the contract and they have to pick the pen up. I mean, uh, what, you didn't sell aluminum siding? That's wrong, so thank you. Next question, sir. It's my wife's job. What happens if you don't have any um, physical or visual contact with, the, oh, with your mark? Yeah, yeah, physical or visual contacts. Actually, NLP works in multiple dimensional barriers. For example, one to zero is, is uh, self-hypnosis and TM and all of these types. One to one is more interviews. One to multiple is like media. Okay, so I make it font 6,000 or color 6,020 and I put all these words in there, 6,021. Hey. Subliminal marketing's okay on the internet. So yeah, you can listen for their, their patterns and their rate. I can just be talking to you on the phone and I say, oh, let you talk first. And oh, he's a slower, he must be a slower visual. And then I can follow along. You're calling it a, I'm sure in other countries they have different words for stuff than we do. So, and then I'll, I'll pick up your patterns. Good question, so thank you. Yes, sir. Um, as far as people lying to you, yeah. Yeah. If, is there a difference between a lie that someone's making up on the spot and something that they've rehearsed? And is there a way to tell? Uh, uh, yeah, sort of. When they're, okay, I want everybody to wiggle this muscle right here on their face. Yeah, all right, you can do that. When they smile, that muscle moves automatically. When you fake smile, like, you ever been to Phoenix? So, and they had that, all that plastic <laughs> surgery stuff. They, that part doesn't move. So, uh, when they're really smiling, you can tell if it's real or not by whether that part of their eye moves. Change the subject rapidly. If you're lying to me, all of a sudden I start talking about cars. 
you will jump right in, tell me everything you know about cars to get off that other subject. If you're not lying, a lot of times it's like, why is he talking about cars? Let's talk about, let's talk about this again. So uh, there's like three or four others. Uh, check the references on your site. Go to Salad in the UK. The UK rocks for NLP. So good question. Thank you. I play poker, which is a great social engineering yeah, game. Yeah. But uh, I was wondering if anything other than the eye movement or speech patterns, any other recognition I can use to tell if they're lying? Um, uh, there's a couple others. You look for jugular vein distension, JVD, right yeah, in I've heard here. That. Yeah, and the, this part of you. And so when you start to lie, you s flight or fright. We all heard of this. Well, there ain't no flighting. So they're frightened. So they're going to start pumping more. Adrenaline's going to go up. Watch for color changes. Physiologically, just like an overheating CPU. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Hi. I was uh, curious as to whether or not pupil dilation was an accurate read on whether yeah. you were building uh, rapport. Yeah. This is, uh, I've heard this. We've talked about this. And there is some dilation. But dude, I'm from the 70s. Mine are permanently dilated. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next question. Um, let's see. Oh, I said let's see. Uh, <laughs> I love your hair. <laughs> wow. I, I, that kind of contradicts what I was about to say. I, I was going to, well, oh, I've said two different ones now. Um, <laughs> it seems like the phrases like I see what you're saying or, or whatnot are relatively rare in normal conversation. It yeah. seems like it could be difficult to Excellent. kind of pry those out. Yeah. And also, it seems like it could get messed up by, uh, for instance, hip hop culture uh, phrases like I feel you or Here's how you, you know beat what I'm it. saying, you know, yep. would come up yep. a lot and could be against the person's natural Here's how you beat tendency. It. People like to talk about their hobbies or something they like, their cars, their OS. Get them off on that. Because when they start talking about something they really like, get me on chocolate. I mean, all the pretenses are gone. I'm like Pavlovian Durland. So you can pick it up in the verbs, and from those, like notice how most of the things we're looking at were verbs. Yeah, you come to DEF CON, learn to diagram sentences. So you listen for that verb, active verbs especially. And then seeing and things like that, hearing. Mm -hmm. And then you know you got them. The first ping of the network is all you need. The longer you recon, you know this story. Are you a sniper or a spray and pray? <laughs> Good question. Tell us about the importance of uh, positive phrasing. Oh, the importance of po He noticed it. I like that. I didn't even plant him. It's called preloading. I always preload people. You are going to learn things in this class you have never known before. And some of the things I say, this class will change your life. Preloading. Did you learn things in here today that will, you can use to change your life? Notice how I'm doing the slow nod. So you pick that up, preloading again. So, and you did learn things. Do, do you ever watch TV? This is the best product I ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they get these producers? So, yeah, great question. And I, I always use preloading. It's quite effective. Thank you. So, uh, uh, oh, come on. This is the last session. I have an excellent time here every year. Sneeze into your arms, <laughs> please. <laughs> or your shirt, not. Sneeze into your arms, 400, oh, go ahead. So you were saying that you can tell by the uh, facial expressions if someone's lying, because if you're really smiling, it, you, these muscles go, and if you're not, yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to fake that by you know, thinking of something really happy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about one book you should read. Great question. Nice to see you, too. Uh, one book you should read called Blink. Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, yeah. Did it change your opinion? Yes. Yeah. Anybody else read Blink? Change your opinion? Yeah. Made you aware of stuff. It's about this thick. Uh, the tipping point guy. If one more person says tipping point and has not read the book, I will. So this one talks all about marketing and this exact microfacial movements. And this guy who puts these motors and goes, eh, I can move this muscle now. Eh. And there's these people that practice moving everyone. And he makes, and if you move muscle 27, 16, and 53, you can get people to believe you're doing this. And if you, 
Am I lying? That's in the book, isn't it? It is the most... Uh, I, read it. Talk to me next year about Blink. So it's not about the Afghan war bride Blink. It's about the marketing about this thing. Um, I've enjoyed speaking to everybody. I will be around. They always save me for last. Armed with this data, could you disrupt a conference? Oh, yeah. You would social engineer your way into better rooms, into uh, past people. Listen, do the recon and practice. And I appreciate you letting me speak to you this year. Thank you.